generic associated types or GUTs have finally landed in the Rust compiler in a very usable form. Let me show you what they're all about. The short explanation is very straightforward. GUTs allow you to create associated types with generic parameters, whether these are type parameters or lifetimes. The original RFC has good examples explaining the idea, so let's take a look. First, let's look at the pointer family example. Let's assume we wish to create a single trait which will represent Rust pointers, like for example arc or rc. This will enable us to create them from arbitrary data. Ok, so let's define our pointer family trait. Trait pointer family, exactly like in the RFC. And now, let the magic begin. Let's create a generic associated type. So type pointer of some t would be something which is a deref with a target being t. I'll get to that in a minute. Let's create a new function which will create our pointer. So f a new of some type t it will take a value being t itself and return our associated type of t of course. This trait will describe all pointer types with its inner associated type. Note that our pointer, whatever it will be, simply needs to implement deref for some t. This generic parameter t is the magic here. It allows us to define our family trait for pointers regardless of what they actually point to. This will become more obvious in a minute. For now, we simply notice that the trait is not generic itself. So maybe let's create two families, for arc and for rc. So we have our struct r family and it will implement our pointer family. Our type of t will simply equal to arc of t. And our new function will do nothing more than simply creating an arc. So arc new from our value. And that's it. Let's do a similar thing for rc. Here we go. rc family returning simply a new rc. So having a family defined for both rc and arc we can now create a struct which will store pointers of some arbitrary types, which would in turn point to some concrete data types. For example, let's create a struct widget, generic over some p which will be simply a pointer family of some sorts. Inside for illustrative purposes, let's store simply a string which will be a p pointer of a string and maybe an int which again will be a p pointer to some i32. Ah. Now we can simply define two helper types rc widget which will be a widget of rc family and an arc widget which will be a widget of an arc family. And now you can see the possibilities it gives. We have the same widget of different pointer families which can contain pointers to different types of data, but those pointers come from the same single family. The pointer is generic, not the pointer family trait. Without guts, we would need to make the pointer family generic and it would look, well, something like this. Here you go, we have a pointer family of some t, which has a non-generic type pointer, which derives to t, just like we had here. And we also have our new function which creates our pointer. Having pointer family generic itself will force us to have different concrete pointer family types for each data type we would like to store. So our widget would become, well, quite complicated. Here you have an example using our generic pointer family instead of a generic associated type. We need a different type for a string and we need a different type for an int. While before we simply had one pointer family and different pointer types. 
As you can see, GATS offer another level of making things generic. This is not only meant as means to make things simpler or more readable. Some features actually require GATS to be available. One such feature is built-in support for async traits. For an in-depth explanation of the problem, I will link to a blog post in the description, so go take a look. Right now, let's take a really brief look of why async traits need GATS using an example from the blog. Ah, here's the example. Now, we know the async keyword is simply a sugar allowing us to not write the actual type of the return future. So our database, this sugars, to this. Since the future captures self, it needs to be bound by its lifetime. As the block states, this is the sugar into an associated type. And we can see the problem right here. The type requires some lifetime. Just like type parameters, generic lifetime parameters are also a feature of GATS. Therefore, async traits require GATS to be present. Ok, I hope you now know what GATS are all about. Hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, post them down below, click like, click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.